Hello, Busted Babies. So I'm going to do a couple of readings today, but I wanted to sneak one in here that I want to do personally. Um, it is a very, very cold case, and it is on one of my relatives. So um, I hope you guys don't mind me doing some investigative work into my own family. Um, um, why not if I'm going to, you know, do other people's readings for for the ones who passed away unjustly i might as well do one for my own family member so welcome to beyond the veil i'm adina if you guys are new here i love you love you love you down even if it's your first time may god bless you so um i have a great aunt her name is aunt minnie um she is one of my grandmother's sisters um, and I am in, in the process of recording videos and in, video interviews of the new elders in my family, my mom, her siblings, things like that. I'm doing interviews on them because every family reunion, we usually honor the OG elders, but now we have a new batch of elders. Now, you know, my mom and her siblings are the new elders. So this reunion, I'm doing a documentary of our family and I'm doing it from the lens of my mom and her siblings and her cousins and her peers. And they can speak about their parents and stuff like that, but I also want to catch their story as well and their memories. And in the process of doing this and putting this together, my ancestors have been heavy on my heart and heavy on my mind and spirit um, as of lately. And it's been an amazing thing. Um, some of the healing and generational curses that have been broken and, you know, healing that's taken place in my family for us alive and even for those on the other side. It's been beautiful. And so Aunt Minnie came up in a conversation with my mother about some of the things that the women in my lineage have endured. Aunt Minnie um, was, is um, my mom's aunt and my great aunt. I don't believe she was alive when I um, when I was born. No, she passed away either when my mom was a teen or in her early adult years. Um, and she was in a very abusive marriage. Now, my grandmother and her sisters are not your usual women. They fight, they shoot, they shank, they bout that life. They ran jook joints, they was baddies. They was just really you know, about that life and very spiritual as well. They were the G's. And that's not to say that domestic abuse is good. That's just to say that even though they were in domestic abuse situations, they weren't that, they fought back. And I'm not, I'm not bragging on that because no matter what the circumstances were, they didn't deserve to have to fight back, but they did. Um, I believe my grandmother had five or six, uh, maybe four, or my grandmother had maybe four other sisters besides herself. Two or three of them, maybe five, one of them passed away early. Two or three of them was about that life and maybe one or two of them. Were, were very much so not. Um, Aunt Minnie was about that life. However, she was about that life because she had to be. They say that her husband was always hitting her and abusing her. She had um, a, a bowling alley or some kind of jib joint and it had like this bowling pin. They had bowling, like one lane bowling pins back then, my mom said. And they were one of the only ones in town who had them, at least the blacks. Because they're not the only business owners. A few of my, my grandmother and her si her sisters have had juke joints, hair salons, um, and juju businesses, so on and so forth. But um, they say that, my mom said that nobody really wanted to come to their establishment. They didn't really make a lot of money there because they were always fighting. And the, long story short, uh, many, um, they got a call one day. And um, it was reported that my Aunt Minnie had passed away. 
that's all my mom was told and after it but apparently the story was they they everybody knew that she had been abused so badly she she had so many internal injuries that um they assumed alleged that her husband came home drunk that night they got into it he hit her um it it, it had to have been they said she had some kind of concussion or something and passed away in her sleep, but it had to have been an old injury to her head that had never fully um, repaired. And he must have hit her in her face or her head. And that ultimately did it. It was an accumulation of injuries. That is what they believe. That's, she was never, he was never charged with anything like that. My family, after my Aunt Minnie passed away, they just, disassociated from him because they knew within themselves what happened to her but they couldn't prove it or anything and my aunt Maggie resolved after that because her and my grandma and you know they they also had relationships where they had to fight um for their life but some of them was just gonna cut you or or you know whatever whatever so they ended up in better relationships my aunt Maggie who I believe was next, um, the oldest at the time that that happened once Aunt Minnie passed away, um, she decided that ain't no man gonna hit her anymore and that the next man that did, she was gonna handle accordingly. Now my Aunt Maggie was alive when I was, when I was born, she was alive up until maybe I was 10 or 11 and she passed away. I was, um, she was very fond of me. I was one of the favorites of her great nieces and my mom said that. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom said it's probably because Aunt Maggie didn't really like her. So she tried to make up for it by being really nice to me. But no, everybody's nice to me. But she had a husband named Uncle Ridley. And they were together until they both passed away. And Aunt Maggie shot Uncle Ridley in the rear end years before I was born. Because he, he thought he was going to come home drunk and put his hands on her. And after what happened to her sister, Aunt Minnie... She had decided back then, ain't no man ever going to hit me again. I ain't doing it no more. And so he came home one day and thought he was going to put his hands on her. And he did. And they said she didn't say nothing. She kept that 30, that 38 in the nightstand and she got it, shot him in the tail. And they, they stayed together and he, and he didn't do it again. So this reading is going to be on Aunt Minnie. I would like to see the circumstances around her passing because if she passed away from natural causes and it didn't have anything to do with this man's abuse, I'd like to give myself at least that piece of knowing. And if it was, I'd like to let her be able to tell her story either way. Thank you, Most High Mother and Father God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for this platform, YouTube, for allowing me to share it. Thank you for these people who are sharing in this gift with me, lending their energy. Thank you for my family and my ancestral courts. Most High Mother and Father God, I ask to speak to my great aunt Minnie, the one who passed away and it was alleged to be at the hands of her husband ultimately. Aunt Minnie, I don't have to call you much because you're here. I just got lightheaded. Aunt Minnie, Aunt Minnie, I call you here to me today so that we can share your story. I'd like to know about the events surrounding your passing. I'd like to know about your husband, your marriage, the abuse you endured. And I'd like to know if your passing was a result of the abuse at the hands of your husband. And if it wasn't, please give me the peace of knowing so that I don't, I'm not holding any grudges and so that everyone who believes that can heal. 
Aunt Minnie, talk to me, please, and share the story of your passing. Was it from natural causes or was it at the hands of your husband? Aunt Minnie was always fighting to get him off of her. She was always trying to defend herself, but how could she because he was a man? Aunt Minnie never stood a chance. He would have, he would have, the outcome would have been that as long as she stayed and she didn't have the strength to leave or it's just that she didn't get around to it quick enough. But she wants it to be known that she was never just feisty and fighting for the hell of being a Langston woman. None of us were, is what she said. We were always fighting at our defense, always getting beat up and abused. And we just so happened to be strong enough to fight back but it's not what we wanted. It's just what we got back then. A lot of women were in that position. Challenging, these were um, injuries sustained to her brain that never healed. And she was allegedly struck the night that she passed away and nights leading up to it. Any further damage done to her would have resulted in this. The challenge with the tower in reverse is that it could have been avoided had she left, but since she didn't leave, it really couldn't have been avoided because the man was abusive, he was gonna hit her again, and the damage was done. It, it wasn't allowed to heal. The burdens of the time. Not to make excuses, but the man always came home with a chip on his shoulder because of the world, because of the times. And even if I tried to make home pleasant, there wasn't anything I could do. There wasn't anything any of us back then could have done when all of these men were overwhelmed and burdened and oppressed and needing an outlet to take out their oppression and they took it out on us. The times, this came out in my Michael Rubin reading when I talked about why it's such an uphill battle for us to, us black people to heal. It's because of the collective trauma that we've endured generationally and that we still endure today. It's not conducive to healing. No matter how strong we are, our strength lies in our resilience and the fact that we're still thriving despite, but being united, we don't have the resources to do that. And it's intentional. And this is what they were experiencing back then the same circumstances that led to the circumstances of us not being able to come together today is what our great grandmothers and great grandfathers were dealing with, even though they was free and had the ability to have businesses. They weren't really free. They were fighting racism, discrimination, and all types of other generational trauma that was a little bit more traumatic because the abuse that they endured at the hands of oppressors was direct to them. That's what they knew. I don't know if at the time that it happened, Aunt Minnie had any intentions of leaving. I think it crossed her mind, but I don't think she was going to do it. And maybe, just maybe she was. Me thinks that night, she would have rather gotten away than fight because she was already battered and didn't want to deal with his 
drunkenness, methinks that night Aunt Minnie did not want to fight. She would have rather him leave or she would try to leave. Argument. He thinks he came home drunk. He thinks that he started an argument, maybe accused her of something or she was sharp with her words because he came home drunk wanting to start a fight, but it started as an argument. He thinks he picked up something and hit her. He thinks he had intentions of causing very, very, very much injury or damage to her. Me thinks that this man always knew he was going to unalive her. He always knew it. He always knew he would and never thought to stop himself. Not once. He knew it would happen eventually. She had been complaining of headaches. She had shown signs of being unwell. And this wasn't a man who didn't want to do what he was doing. And this is a man who got away with it. And hoped that he would. Because that's in his hopes and fears. And what really happened to Aunt Minnie before today went into everyone's grave. Before today, before the high priestess, it was a known secret. Everybody knew, but there was no proof, no evidence. I'll start there. Until I was born, there was no one who was willing to use their gift the way I am on behalf of their ancestors and their family. Let me see what this, yes, speaking out, afraid. She's telling me about a dream I had when I realized that I was chosen to do, to walk in this type of path of my family's gifts because we're all spiritually gifted but I'm the one who chose to walk in this path I'm not the first one who was asked to do it though and I say the first one since the last ones I'm not the first one who was asked I'm the first one who accepted the high priestess in reverse on many all her sisters knew the Empress in reverse. A culmination of all the queens and one went away. I don't know if she was the first to go. I think that was Elizabeth who died in her early 20s. But Minnie was the first to go that wasn't natural. And they know that. Um, but they, they just had to grieve and move on knowing that secret because we're still talking about the high priestess in reverse, that her husband was a drunken mess and he came home drunk that night and allegedly beat on Aunt Minnie because he was always, I don't know if he was in the, in the service, came back from the service or something and came back drunken and abusive Let me look into the Empress in reverse, my, my grandmother and her sisters. Again, they all talked about it. They all knew about the fights and the arguments. Everyone knew. And according to my mother, that's true. Everyone knew. Um, it, it was an open secret. Um, it seems as though Maybe they did try talking to her at some point, but after a while, um, they didn't because she was they just, they just didn't for whatever reason. And it seems with that, the sun in reverse, a lot of black people were, were going through something similar. Um, it, it just became an open secret. 
they they had so much compassion for their sister, but it was nothing they could do. For some reason, she felt for one, the business, I see the business wasn't making money. I think that they had a conversation with her about why people weren't coming to the jib joint. And my mom said it's because they fought too much. Her and her husband fought too much and people didn't like coming there. I think my grandmother's had a conversation with her then when she had to close her business or lost her business about why it was happening. But she didn't listen. It was, it was, you know, she told them that they was going to work it out. And uh, it's, it's just the way it was with black women. I want to look into this two of wands in reverse. Five of pentacles reverse. No, she she wasn't going anywhere. She wasn't going to leave. Even if she thought about it, the only time it would have, she really, really, really was going to put any effort into it was the night that he came home ready to fight and she lost her life because I see that she did want to leave that night whether she knew he was going to do irreparable damage or not she didn't want to partake in what was about to go down but she wasn't planning on leaving her husband because that's it's where her bread and butter was that was her home you know where else how was where is she gonna, what was she going to do and where was she going to go if she left her husband one of those situations. Eight of Cups. Now that night that it happened when he came home fighting, she was ready to go then. Then she was ready to go enough. But it was too late. She might have said she was going to leave him and shouldn't have said anything. Probably should have just left. Because then he had time to do what he did. You know, he came home ready to fight. And she said, that's enough. I'm leaving. And he, and he said, nah. Possibly she went to try to pack her things. And he grabbed something. Page of Wands grabbed something. And that's what sent her to glory. He hit her with something allegedly. Um, also waited before calling anyone until a time where he could say that she passed away in her sleep. I see in a fit of rage, he hit her with something, dropped it as she, you know, realized as she fell to the floor he tried to shake her wake her up but it was too late fell to the floor fell to the bed wherever she fell and he did allegedly wait before alerting everyone um, because her sisters or a sister wouldn't know what he had done He did fear going to jail. He did fear getting caught, the hermit, um, in his hopes and fears. But he went into his grave with what he did. Being a very, very, very controlling and abusive man. A very drunken, controlling and abusive man. He went into his grave with that but he also went into his grave unpunished. He thinks that he left, went on, took on another woman at some point in his life before he passed away. Because my mother said that he didn't have children with my Aunt Minnie, but that my mom said that they had a dog, but I believe she also mentioned that he had a son. So he went on and took on another woman and took that to his grave, King of Wands. He knew that she would never really be able to defend herself against him, 
king of wands, which is why he knew eventually he would unalive her. And he liked to drink. And he knew what he could do when he was drunk. He knew what he was capable of, which is why I said he knew what he would do eventually because he knew what he did when he was drunk and he liked to drink and something about it. When he was drunk, he had more power to do that to her. He had too much of a conscience to do it sober, but drunk, he lost his conscience and he could enjoy the act of abusing her. And that night when she mentioned leaving him and taking her and she started grabbing things, he just didn't want to let her leave. He just, because she had the audacity to speak as if she was, you know, going to leave him and the tower reverse. It had been too many, too many beatings. Too many injuries. Um, and it got worse. It only was worse because she would fight him too. And so it was inevitable that this injury happened as long as she stayed there and entertained his foolishness. This could have been my grandmother because she's an Aquarius. Could have been another one of them who's an Aquarius and I just don't know it, but seems like my grandmother um, would have helped her, tried to help her before. And that is my grandmother's character, but she didn't take it. Maybe they got into it before or weren't able to have a nice conversation about it and then they just stopped having that conversation. Feels like they felt like my grandmother's situation was better so she just didn't understand. I don't wanna say envy, but it, it's some regret of how she felt about not listening to my grandmother's advice. Because it's like, I don't know if my grandmother was with my grandfather. You know what, she was because my mother was born by the time Aunt Minnie passed away. So my grandmother had an amazing man, an amazing relationship. My grandma, my grandfather never beat on my grandmother. Her old, her first husband did, but my grandfather never did. My grandmother, on the other hand, she might've put holy hands on him and she definitely put hands on his other women back in the day before they got saved and he stopped fooling around in them streets like that. She absolutely pulled women out of cars, kicked down doors, knocked bitches down, knocked them out. She was about that life, but between her and my grandfather, there was no abuse. She had a good man, Savannah, and she had a family back then. And they was, they was the ones that was most put together. My grandmother and her family was the ones most put together. My Aunt Lillian and her family, they probably were too. Aunt Maggie, she really wasn't, wasn't with that no more. I don't know if that was before or after she put a bullet in him, but it seems like at the time, my grandmother was the most put together and that's why she didn't want to listen to my grandmother or accept her help. And I, I pray that now there could be healing taking place even though they're all together and they would have already had these conversations. Now that it's out in the open and it's been spoken, things can heal more when they're not a secret anymore when they're spoken. And so, Aunt Minnie, you're, you're, it's no longer a secret and you no longer did not get justice. Even though you didn't get physical justice, justice in reverse didn't come out in, um, in the reading either because now it's out in the open and everybody even if it's just me and my subscribers know that your death your passing was not a natural cause it was the result of residual dom domestic abuse and I will be praying for your soul and for your healing and for all of our healing 
God bless you, Aunt Minnie. May you depart in peace. Back to the lands where you came from. I love you. And I love you guys too. Thank you for going on this journey with me into my family's tea. If I read everybody else, why not read my own family's tea? Love you guys. And um, if you or anyone that you know um, is a victim currently, or you suspect that they are a victim of domestic abuse, domestic violence in any way, verbal, mental, emotional, or physical, please, please, please be there for them. Even if you get tired of watching them make foolish choices, sometimes being for them isn't just trying to hammer into them what you think they should do. And sometimes it's not even for your peace. It's not even keeping in close contact. But if they call you crying, and even if you know that they're not going to leave and you don't want to do it, if they reach out to you, just be there for them when they reach out to you. Don't turn them away. Um, and if they ask for help and you don't feel like you want to get involved, tell them to call me. Refer them to me. Love you. Bye.